I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the book of Job, chapter 19. So let's focus on verses 13 through 16. He has made my brothers keep their distance. Those who know me are wholly estranged from me. My kinfolk have failed me, and my close friends have forgotten me. Those living in my house consider me a stranger, my slave girls too. In their view, I'm a foreigner. I call my servant, and he doesn't answer, even if I beg him for a favor. Now, as we move into the second half of the book of Job, all this messianic imagery gets more identifiable to the narrative of Jesus' suffering. And it is as if Job had already heard the story of Jesus. Try reading today's chapter alongside Isaiah 53, for instance. But moving on to today's passage, it is as if we are transported to Jesus' trial before the Sanhedrin at Caiaphas' home. And earlier, Jesus had predicted that his close followers would abandon him when he began to suffer persecution, which led up to his crucifixion. Mark chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus says, You will all fall away. Speaking of calling for your servant and him not coming, Jesus told them, For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. Their abandonment of Jesus was also prophesied in Zechariah chapter 13. Specifically, Jesus told Peter, who was declaring that he would follow Jesus even unto death. Well, Jesus told Peter that he would deny him outright. Mark 14, verses 29 and 30. Peter declared, even if I fall away, uh, even if I, if all of them fall away, I will not. And truly, I tell you, Jesus answered today, yeah, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you yourself will disown me three times. You see, there is an interesting twist in today's passage, too, nestled in the midst of Job's lament. Of course, his friends won't hang with him. His parents, his his family doesn't want to hang with him. Everybody's abandoned him. And Job mentions that even his slave girls consider him to be a foreigner. So now consider at the trial of Jesus, the dialogue between Caiaphas' servant girl and Peter, as Peter was warming himself by the fire in the high priest's courtyard, afraid to be identified with Jesus. Mark 14, verses 66 through 70. As Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you're saying. And he went on to the porch, and a rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him again and began to say to those who stood by, Hey, he's one of them. But he denied it again, and a little later those who stood by said to Peter again, Surely you are one of them, for you're a Galilean, and your speech shows it. Well, Hebrews chapter 4 describes how Jesus is our superior high priest. He's not in the order of Levi, he's in the order of what they call Melchizedek. And that being the case, shouldn't the high priest's home have been Jesus' home? And shouldn't the servant girl of the high priest have been Jesus' servant girl? You see, strictly in principle, of course. And yet the servant girl considered Jesus to be a Nazarene, when in fact he was actually a Judean by birth, having been born in, in Bethlehem. And the Bible says that he was from the tribe of Judah. So, Peter, who declared to Jesus that he would follow him even to the grave, he becomes the servant in today's passage who doesn't answer, even though his master begs him for a favor. Peter had an opportunity to make a stand for Jesus and to testify rightly at Jesus' trial, and he looked for his own self-preservation more than he longed to defend the Lord. When was the last time that you defended the Lord? Not out of anger, not out of arrogance, but just out of love for some other person. Risked your reputation so that the Lord's reputation could be rightly understood. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Groundworks Ministries operates entirely through financial donations from faithful people like you. And your giving to Groundworks Ministries transforms lives. Would you consider making a donation to Groundworks Ministries today? We need your monthly support now more than ever. 
And donating is secure and it's easy at our website, groundworksministries.com. As a matter of fact, if somehow, I think it'd be hard to get confused, but if you do, you can even uh, send us a message right from the website and say, help me understand this. Another way to help is to tell people about Groundworks Ministries. You can share these podcasts with your friends and family and on your social media. And of course, you can always direct folks to our website, groundworksministries.com. 